Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. I'm Steve Hall. It is time for the match preview show ahead of Manchester United versus Liverpool in the FA Cup quarterfinals. It's a huge, huge game, massive, massive occasion. I'm delighted to be joined by Sam Walker and by John Machen to chat through it all. It's going to be an absolute barnstorming game. Legends can be made at Old Trafford for Liverpool, that is for certain. Before we get on with the show and have a big old chat about what could happen on Sunday, I want to speak about, basically speaking about legends. We recently had the opportunity to go and speak to two of them. Yes, John, your son, went down to the Axe Training Centre to talk to John Aldridge and to Ian Rush, so yeah, check out this and we'll be back very, very shortly. I used to practice outside every single day, keeping the ball up. And my dad says to me, you're good with your head. He said, put the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I've gone, serious dad, you know, just put that wall. And I've gone, oh, don't do this at home, whatever you do. Get in the entry, got a ball, head down and went, it was like a balloon. People I just, just realised why I was no good in the air. <laughs> <laughs> When you're starting a game, you think differently. And I'll never forget, look down now, there was red and blue everywhere. Yeah. Weird enough, said to himself, where do I run to when I score? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Aldo, one moment from your career. Um, I think it was the day I signed for Liverpool. The day I signed was 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 the day I dreamt of it, mm. when I was a kid, when I used to go home and away on the trains for Liverpool, when I was in the boys' pen. Yeah. I never thought I would pump pen to paper. Tickets are available now. You can go to the official Liverpool website to pick them up. Make sure you get down Saturday, the 23rd of March. Liverpool legend, Ajax legend, Adam Field. Absolute wonderful, wonderful interview with two absolute goal scoring machines if you want to go and check it out it is available at the AXA UK YouTube channel there is a link in the description below whether you're listening to this as a podcast or you're watching it as a video do go and check it out what's it like John to watch your son interviewing two people who used to pay to go and watch on the cop John Aldridge and Rush two legends is it a bit surreal it is daft, yeah. <laughs> Just daft, <isn't laughs> because it? I mean, re really, you never got near your heroes, did you? You might, yeah. s you might see them in their car getting out. You know, and when you're a kid, you, you chase them around for autographs and stuff, but mm. you hardly ever come into contact with them. So it is bizarre. It was mad as well because I'm not sure you saw there, but Ian Rush brought along his his, his share from the cup final. And Paul's holding it, and he was like, "I went to this game. I watched. I celebrated them scoring a goal in this shirt." Which one was it? Uh, Ninety-two, I think. Oh, it was. the FA Cup, yeah, yeah. And they were both in my favourite Liverpool team ever, really, until Klopp came along. <laughs> you know, um, the late eighties, you know, eighty-eight team, just fantastic. Absolutely. So yeah, um, go and check that out. Like I say, at the end, not, not now. Wait till you've watched and listened to us. But then the link is in the description <laughs> at the end of it. Um, right then, Sam, I'll come to you at. Um, mm -hmm. The big games keep on rolling. Liverpool got through last night in relative, well, I say relatively, in very, very comfortable fashion. That's a huge benefit, isn't it, going into this game? You know, if you look what, what like, for example, what Rangers and Benfica went through, you know, Atalanta or even Leverkusen against Carabag, where they had to go pedal to the metal. Liverpool basically had a training session before Man United. Um, obviously, United have had a bit of a break. They're not playing, obviously, European football. They're out of it, mm. but... That, that that Thursday being a bit of a procession should be it could be crucially because it might give Jurgen a few more not 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 he less headaches but in terms of like there won't be too many you think we've got too many miles on the legs no and, and I think in football I think we we probably put too much <coughs> we put too much emphasis on this like it's, us fans we sit there saying rest him don't play them there don't play them there like the reality of it is football players want to play as much football as they possibly can and Ooh. they don't want to be rested unless they really have to um, and all right, you get games like last night where let's be honest the tie was won before kickoff but the lads still well, I went through to the game and, and my dad was saying to me oh I think it'll be about 2-2 two, two tonight I said it won't be I said they'll batter them because they want to score goals they want to get confidence and going into Sunday that's exactly what we're, we're, uh, we we got and what we needed like Gakpo's been in bad form he got two goals Nunez got a goal against Salah and so on and so on so that can only do positive things um, hope Bobby Clark's okay because make the squad be nice that but um, going into Sunday all you wanted was more goals um, just flying high in confidence everyone wants to get on the, on the score sheet again I think Klopp even hinted in his conference about uh, the rhythm you get into oh. playing twice a week you know, you don't really want to break at this kind of time of the season. You just want to keep buzzing you, along. You prime for it, don't you? The reason why they do pre-season training is for these moments, for this 15-game, 20-game <laughs> run of back-to-back -back games where everyone on the squad's just playing. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Let's let's have a look at the the, the opposition and Sam. Man yeah. United. Uh, they've had a couple of injury updates themselves. Positive f- from their point of view. Uh, Eric Ten Hag confirmed today. Wan Bissaka, Maguire, and Hoyland should all be available, which is which is good news for them. They're still obviously without Luke Shaw. They're without Lissandro Martinez. Malassia seems like he's fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, he, he's he, had he the yeah. struggle at left back. He said Mason Mount's getting close, but he's not there yet. Um, they're a, they're a very strange team, Man United, and that. Even like I watched them recently, I beat, beat Everton, but I thought they were rubbish. Like yeah. I, I couldn't quite believe they won that game, but they, 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 they seem to find ways at times. And, and Old Trafford's yeah. never easy. We the people have found out this season. You know, they come to Anfield and and park the bus. I was almost thinking like take form out the window a little bit, Sam. Yeah. Is it maybe better in terms of a spectacle? Obviously, Liverpool would prefer to be at. Yeah. to be at Anfield but there's no way Man United and Old Trafford will let Man United park a bus at Old Trafford so regardless of what form they're in I don't think there's any way where their fans will let them just sit and camp on their own edge of their own box and if they come and play football that could benefit us yeah I think it's interesting because you say that but we don't have a replay today so uh, Sunday so we could just go to extra time and penalties so if you offer Man United fans now extra time and penalties they'd probably, yeah, probably take it because they're not favourites are they let's be honest they're struggling you know Hoyland's had a good little run but he's not going to start if he does start he's, the manager's foolish because he'll be finished out of steam by 55-60 minutes so they're going to be they're going to be coming into it with the players who've played lots and lots of football haven't really been rotated too much the lads that have played all the games haven't really been injured in Fernandez and Rashford and Agarnacho they've conceded 20 shots a game recently what it comes down to for me they've, they've won games like Luton and Everton and so on but what it comes down to for me is purely down to other teams taking the chances even West Ham got beat 3-0 but they took the chances <coughs> Um, you know who did they play in the FA Cup you know Forrest had opportunities in that game to go through yeah. it comes down to you being clinical against them uh, and that's that's all it'll be again on Sunday if we don't win on Sunday for me it won't be down to the fact that man you've battled us it'll be a couple of breakaway goals or something and we've just been wasting chances or, or squ- squandering opportunities to play someone in if we're on point like we have been you know relatively recently it, it, we, we will create lots of chances to score I suppose John as well looking at their form going back say to Let's say to February, the when they just got they got they beat Aston Villa, which was a good win. Mm-hmm. Um, they they squeak by Luton two one. They get beat by Fulham at home two one. They just get through Forest in the cup, like Sam says. Um, they get played off the park by Man City. Yeah. I know they were winning, but they, 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 in the end, I think the score line was was about right. And then they beat Everton the other day, but it was. Pens win. Too soft. They goal. Got yeah, beat by yeah. Everton, they, they, Everton were all over team. them. It, it does feel a little bit like. I mean, I, not great, I always get a bit of a twitch when we play United in the cup because we went so long without being able to beat them. You know, I mean, I remember the 77 Cup final where they had two deflected goals and beat us, stopped us getting the treble. I mean, and that's the way they've been in cup ties. And at, at Old Trafford, if they get a goal, that crowd really gets up, mm. you know, and they, they, they can be really difficult. That's why, you know, in the, I'd much rather we played the league game first you know, get that yeah. out of the way because I think yeah. we'd batter them and then you'd worry you wouldn't worry about the cup game but you know we, we obviously um, are going to face a United who and the, to, to be honest their manager's job's on the line yeah. they get not, they get, there's nothing left for them if they go out of the cup this is their season isn't it Sam? yeah yeah. Um, so it's going to be I think it's going to be a really difficult game but it shouldn't be because they're not very good yeah, it's, you know? it's just all traffic yeah. Liverpool, well, look, the optimistic fans will think that they can still get fifth I think that's I think for them to, for, <coughs> will Spurs and Villa drop points yes will United drop nine less than them doubt it so for me I think I think this is their season yeah I think if they if they, if they go out the cup this weekend then there's a very very good chance that Ten Hag probably goes if he's if he's gonna go soon i think i think it'll be after this game if they're gonna back him anyway then he stays in and goes through the summer i don't i don't see a world where we beat them handily sunday he stays and then goes in the summer i feel like they'd clear decks because they just got a new owner so it, you are right this is could be a world where his job's on the line yeah um and i, I, I yeah i i i can't I can only see a world where we have a one-off situation where Man U go through. So it would have to be a situation where they outplay us, or sorry, their game plan comes right into fruition and works for them, and we just get it all wrong. There's too many other algorithms to put in that just end with Liverpool winning this game. So it has to be a perfect storm for United to beat us. It's a massive pitch as well, and Nunes, Salah, and Diaz will be a nightmare. I know they've got quick players as well, but like it's different. It's different, totally different game. The only thing on it, John, is like Liverpool's records at Old Trafford. Is up and down. Like, listen, we've had some under the club mm. very recently. There's been some big wins, 
but you know they lost there last season again. The it, it has no way it's been playing sailing there. That's where, you know it's a cup tie, so we get more of the stands. It's so like it when you play Everton, but... you can never absolutely guarantee you'll batter them no matter what how no, bad yeah. they are. It, <coughs> it's a different Just animal. Given the it's a different animal altogether, isn't it? And the fact that it's a cup tie rather than a, just an ordinary league game, yeah. you know, it adds a bit of spice to it, and um, it, anything could happen. I mean. Class should tell, and we should beat them, and we should beat them comfortably. Mm. But who knows? It's it's one of them. Like when you when you watch them in big games, Sam. To be fair, the I don't know what they sometimes can do is, is frustrate. They frustrated us. They frustrated Manchester City for an hour. Now bear in mind, they're both. Oh, they missed some sitters though, City. And they're away from home. Like, yeah. I, I do wonder the, the old Trafford thing is is circle back to it. How does Old Trafford respond if Liverpool are on the front foot yeah. and they just camped out? They, they didn't respond great the other day against Everton mm. and they were winning, but it it, it was they were the crowd were getting restless. I would think their only hope of winning is the crowd. Yeah. So if we dampen the crowd down because <laughs> they're defending all the time, yeah. then I think that's the game lost for them. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you, if you look last year, it was the perfect storm situation, wasn't it? Um, we played them; they were on the brink. We we struggled through the first two games, a couple of different reasons, Fulham, and then obviously uh, Crystal Palace at home. We had players sent, you know, sent off, and you know we were going into that game like, right, we need to win to get our season back sorted again. But then we lost about five players that week, didn't we? We ended up with like ten players injured there. On the flip side to that is they had a massive big parade outside kicking off about the owners. We're not going to get that anymore. Uh, and and it was sort of like a whip around the stadium. They just lost the first two games of the season with Brighton and then Brentford away and they got battered and they looked terrible. And it was like, who is this Ten Hag? And they literally all left it all out there on the pitch and they beat us. Was it 2-1? I can't remember how. Two, I, think, was it in the end? I can't remember. Um, and I think it was two, and they were two nil up, and then yeah, Salah yeah, got yeah, one yeah, back. One. But we were poor, and we had half a team out, and we weren't in good rhythm. Yeah. And that was that's what I'm talking about. Perfect storms is that f- I think for United to beat us, it has to be that situation. And I'm not cursing us because let's be honest, if we lose on Sunday, we'll blatantly come away with it, going it was our fault. You know, we're not, there's not a way where Man United turn up on Sunday and turn into prime Barcelona, and we, you know it will be down to what Liverpool don't do if we don't win this game. Yeah. So I just think we have to be on job, and I, I just want to see right the confidence of the players we've got now. Do what they did at Wembley, just go there, forget who you're playing, forget the occasion, and just play. And if we do that, I think we'll be absolutely fine. I suppose the, the in terms of danger man for them, John, like it's Bruno Fernandes who pulls the strings. They might have Hoyland up front again, um, who was getting into a bit of form. Other than that, Mainu's been good. Well, Gone, Joe's Garnacho been good. Might throw himself around the penalty area. Yeah, but that's yeah. a danger. But apart from that, there isn't like they, they got Fernandez. You just frustrate him, and after ten or fifteen minutes of being frustrated, he gets a sulk on, doesn't he, and wanders around the pitch doing that. They, they do feel like a team. Like I say, Sam, they have got you've got some technically good players. They're all good players we mentioned. They also feel a bit flaky. Yeah, oh, massively. I, I think Luke Shaw's massive loss to them. <coughs> whenever, whenever Man United get a result against us, I always think Luke Shaw's had a good game. I always think, oh, he's done well against Salah. Salah. He, he just reads them really well, doesn't he? Um, and I think at the back, you know, Martinez is a fight. He gets away with murder. He's a feisty little character. So Liverpool's a perfect game for him where the referees are a bit lenient anyway. I think a player like Maguire's, if he does start, is, or even Lindelof is. It's not what United need to be seeing on a pitch against the pace we've got. Um, what, what I think qu- will play well into our hands is, uh, depending, obviously, we'll go into deciding our teams between us because it never ends up being the right one, does it? Let's be honest. Uh, but our teams is, I think, our fullbacks will play a lot more of an, a, an attacking threat in the game than, than United's because we're talking about Wan Bissaka, Lindelof playing left back, maybe you know, may- maybe Dallow on one side, who's, <coughs> who's half decent when he's on the ball, but. When you're talking about like Robertson and Bradley and even to an extent Gomez, the, the threat offered from, from the wide fullback is totally different from us. So I think they're going to be quite rigid at the back, not give up too much space, almost like an old school Italian back line, quite deep, which will be interesting. Uh, and then they'll probably sit there with the two sitters, won't they, with um, Casemiro and, and, and Menu. So it's just going to be about utilising the space when we do get it. Suppose their injury news. They, as I mentioned they got a few back. I think they've ruled Johnny Evans out, which is ironic. He's actually been all life for them yeah. recently. Um, so if they'll be out, they'll be hoping that Maguire comes straight back in and plays alongside Varane. So I mean, in theory, that should be an upgrade for them. You'd you think Harry Maguire should be John, but it's only whether how, how fit he is. There aren't yeah, too no. there aren't too many there who terrify you, rather. <clears throat> and he's decent in the air, so it negates our corner, <clears throat> our corner threat a little bit, Excuse doesn't me. it? Yes. But other than that, let's let, let's go Liverpool then. Let's let's focus on us then, Sam. We've we've done enough of them, mm. um, and we <laughs> ate them. Um, injury wise, yeah. So Gravenberch is back. He's Bobby Clark's fine. Oh, that's good. Um, 
Yeah, you can say he got he got a kick, but he should be fine. Um, no Canate, it looks like he said they're losing that race, so it's a very similar squad that was available on, on Thursday night. You can you can actually just put Graven Birch in it, yeah. You can include Ryan Graven Birch. Um, the good news is after the break, he said Liverpool should have Bachetta and Jones, and then a week after Brighton, I think he said. Um, Trent and Jota. Massive, so if yeah. it, it feels like thing touch wood, things are going okay. Not for you though, Steve. Struggling here, aren't you? Mate? Me, me, the, the throat is a bit croaky. I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, I'm trying. To, I'm, I'm, I'm battling through this this croaky throat. Um, Sorry, mate. It's a throat that in. No, it's, all, it's absolutely fine. Um, in, in terms of team, yeah. let, let's sign pick one. So Keller is going to be in goal. Mm-hmm. So it means Van Dijk can. Well, who's next to Van Dijk? Because he's got he's got recently recalled to England, Joe yeah. Gomez, well, or he's got Jarrell Quanta. We all said Gomez last week, didn't we? And it ended up with Quanta, so I think he'd probably be Quanta again. But that was with Joe left back, wasn't it? Yeah. It depends. Robbo played ninety minutes the other day. It almost feels like no, and, and Gomez didn't. So I know. So thinking. you feel like, but then so did Bradley, again. didn't he? So um, I mean, I don't think they kill. I just think they'll all be laced up, ready to go. All of them, yeah, a lot yeah. of them. I mean. I don't know. I, I really like Quanter. I think it's another massive challenge for him. It's like he's done all these tick boxes. Newcastle away with ten men. Um, you know, it was, he, he's done. Did he? I don't know if he came on against Arsenal at all. I can't remember, but he definitely came on. Who's that? Uh, Quanter. I'm just trying to tick tick, tick his he's, big boxes off that yeah, he's, he's done. He's been brilliant. He, 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 did, he, did he come on against Tottenham when we were down to nine men or something like that? He might have in that. He, game, on, he, so. on, he come on at Newcastle when we were down. Yeah, to definitely, Tottenham definitely Newcastle. Come on the final. Man City at home. A few, a few tough games, away games like to Wolves and places like that. So it would be another big ask for him. Go to United and play, mate, with that atmosphere. Maybe. Um, I might be tempted personally to go Gomez and Van Dijk. We know that works. We know they're both in good form. Robertson and Bradley. That I'd be tempted personally to put that. What Klopp does, he backs his boys. So you might end up seeing Gomez left back and Quanta play. I, I just think Robbo played such a lot of football last night in yeah. two different positions. I mean, to be I fair, the second half he was, oh yeah, he was just stood there. Centre half, wasn't he? Know, but it still didn't strike me as um, perfect preparation for the away game at United. But but Gomez is sat on the bench, you know. Mm. Uh, but having said that, Robbo at, at Old Trafford, that's what you'd want in it. You know that kind of mm. who's there right mid? It probably end up being Fernandez, won't it? I'm just thinking in terms of. <laughs> His, you know his energy and his, yeah. you know his grit. <coughs> you know yeah. you want a bit of that enthusiasm. Yeah. You know, so he, what, he was good coming off the but, bench though, weren't he? That worked really well. That he came yeah. on and added something to the yeah. game. I thought. I think Gomez. Was, about I think Gomez is going to play. It's so it's just a just question where. of what position. He's what are we going play. with then? What do you think he'll do? Some. I think he goes with the same back line, back five as last week. In so fact, I would the same. Gomez left yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 Pro- I'm proven it works. That. I'm going with that. Took yeah. Quanter off, didn't he, as well, for Verge. Yeah. I'm mad that one. Yeah, no, I'm not going to lie. We were yeah. texting, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I I wouldn't be shocked if Gomez was right back. Oh, OK. And he just said, you know, if Man United... Man United's threat against Liverpool has often been Rashford going out to that left-hand mm-hmm. side and, and trying to do bits or going at Joe in this instance. That maybe the... I don't know, there's some Conrad, he's been great. And there's no issues. I wouldn't be shocked if you, if, like John said, experience, get Robbo and Van Dijk on, and then Kwanzaa and Gomez, mm. make a big game away at all tough. I don't know, but yeah. he, he, all options are sound. Um, or oh, Ibu just plays and we're just all fooled because he's done that to us a few times. Yeah, he thought he was going to play last week. We did, didn't, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> and, and didn't he? Say, it, there's been even with the final. You know, there was there was all kinds of noise coming out the club about you know the, the three lads being injured, being in the squad. Not one of them was even in there. So even close. Yeah. Midfield then. Endo, yeah, Endo, McAllister, yeah, Sabosley, Sabosley. I think so. I mean, there's an Elliot argument because he only played half an hour last night, but he actually looked like he was getting some form back. Sabosley last night, yeah. I thought he looked, you know, on the ball, he looked as though he was starting to get, you know, a, a, that little bit of time on the ball. You know, yeah. I know it was only Sparta, but you know, he 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 had a goal. bit of a bad run, didn't he, before he yeah. got injured. Uh, where he started to fade you know, like he a could do with the minutes he has to, like the minutes should do him the yeah. time. and it was so easy last half an yeah. hour it was, a, it was a game like <coughs> I, I loved one not just the last half hour the first half hour was pretty well, yeah, but, yeah. They were, they were, but they were at it weren't they they were chasing down were three goals a, in yeah. three minutes six seconds yeah. or something mm-hmm. it was just unbelievable I, he scored two in the last three hasn't he how many goals he got this season because I remember <coughs> I can remember a good a good few like but he must have five or six now yeah, I can find you know, off for, you, for, for a centre midfielder to be getting between five and ten is is what we've probably not had for a little while. Maybe the odd one, but it's it's not something new for Shabazz, like is it? He, he's very much, you know, a goal scorer and player. Like like seven, yeah. 
Wow, so more, I thought six, maybe. So he scored seven goals this season. So he's someone who'd be looking, thinking, I can get 10 goals this year, you know, in all comps. So I think, again, for him, I think it's um, an opportunity to, to get in, you know, get at them, t- turn Casemiro around. You know, Menu's a good young player, but he's he's had that sort of real kick up what they all get, and then he's lulled a touch, which is what happens to every young player, unless your name's Conor Bradley. But uh, you, 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 you sort of kick on, and then, and then it, you, reality hits, and you realise the grind's hard in the team. So I think I'd want to be seeing him starting and getting beyond Casemiro, and then you know what, Elliot's the perfect player. If he, if sixty is enough for him, Elliot's the perfect player to come on and have that last that boost. It, there was a couple of players yesterday, John, who needed minutes. Mo Salah's the other one, but Salah's like definitely one. It feels like I, I, I wasn't sure if they were they were resting Elliot, therefore because he might start so he only gets a little bit of run out the end and maybe they're trying to say to Sobersley well you want to start the weekend so you can you can have all these minutes or actually they're just trying to get Sobersley up to up to some a little bit of rhythm a bit of speed because both will be worthwhile options you know Harvey Elliott comes off the bench he has well, a Harvey really Elliott has been brilliant recently yeah. I mean to be honest he's been brilliant most of the season and, yeah. and he's had he's had little, <coughs> little dips but again last night every time he gets on the ball he's moving the ball yeah. he, you know he's quick you know, he might, he's quick in his head rather than necessarily yeah. his feet. Yeah. But uh, w- the game speeds up when he gets the ball. Very direct, isn't he? Yeah. Very direct. Yeah, yeah. He was very unlucky not to score as well. Yeah. <laughs> Proper goal snatch, that yeah. one. Yeah. The old school ones. Don't mind that from Cody. Uh, yeah, fr- absolutely. Front three, Nunes, Diaz, Salah, Sammy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's not yeah. too much else. Uh, I th- I, that's, that's, that's the don't, front three as well. Don't see how it could be anything else. That, and, and you know, we haven't seen it yet because... Um, in the last few games we've had them back and I've been I've, this new Nunes who just looks like a different player now since since Christmas when he's really kicked on uh, w- him and Salah started playing really well together and then we had that sort of weird flip flop the last few weeks where you had Nunes and then Salah in the first Prague game and then you had Nunes for the first hour and then he kind of got tired which is naturally right and then Salah come on um, and was a bit rusty but he was only on with him for 10 minutes and then you had yesterday where for, for between them he's got they got five goals or assists in like um in, in 45 minutes I'm looking forward to seeing that again because I just think those two need two people each to mark them which makes it extremely difficult for anyone so we were talking earlier about Garnacho's pace and stuff but what Garnacho is going to have to do in this game is get back and help with Salah <coughs> he's going to have to yeah so it's- it was interesting with Salah yesterday John because he looked like I mean the end of the game Jaeger had literally told him just walk you know we, we, don't, we don't want you getting injured they were, were going to take him off and obviously Bobby Clark got yeah. the ankle injury so he just had to just walk about but he did look very sharp in that first 15-20 minutes before the game was dead and he didn't have to really was get himself involved was it the Brentford involved. game he came on and he had a few minutes yeah he cool. just looked awesome in that game oh. in just a few <coughs> minutes I just thought my god he's really gone up a notch and he, the next time he played, he, he wasn't. <laughs> He'd obviously lost a bit of a something. Bit. And last night he seemed to be getting that back again, you know, real, you know. A, 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 and to be honest, that pass for Diaz in the previous oh, game, City, you know, that met, that was Salem, you know, really getting up to speed. And last night we saw the culmination of that, I think. It does look, does, that Diaz, Salah, Nunes at the moment, I mean, with no Jota available, Sam. Yeah. I know Diaz had a couple of misses, unfortunately, against City, but they all look like they're in good nick as well. Yeah. But definitely Nunes and Diaz. Salah looks like he's just coming back in after mm-hmm. his layoff. And to be fair, it's very rare Salah's in bad form. He has the occasional little couple of games where he isn't great, but he's always a goal threat. But he'll it score like, even if he's having a well, bad that's what game. I was about to say. That's the difference, it does, yeah. that, that feels like a front three with McAllister and Sabozlai behind it. Mm. It feels like there's a lot of goals in that Liverpool team there. Oh, absolutely. Against the team who are going to be absolutely cacking themselves against that. I think we've scored the most goals across all competitions in, in English football this year, haven't we? Like, nobody's scored more. We've bladdered some teams in the, in the Europa League and even the FA Cup. I know Arsenal have got more in the Prem, but they haven't had no football, really, apart from Premier League games since since January. So, it, I, it, I mean, it, that it, three are really frightening. I, oh. think. I wouldn't want to play against mm. them. I do wonder, like, that, I, I agree, I think that'll be the team how much he has got half an eye on X time and penalties as well, no, Sam, because, none. I mean, you want to avoid it. My guess is, I suppose, even if it got there, that team that we've got, we're still looking at a bench of whichever of... Um, the, the back line, the, the, yeah. the back line, whoever doesn't play, so yeah. whether it's Tim McCarson and Gomez, Robertson, whoever, then your midfield options, you'll still have Graven Birch, you'll still have and Elliot, Elliot also and, a, a, and Gakpo still yeah, available, absolutely. so it does feel like the squad's starting to come on a little bit. Those injuries that we mentioned at the top of the show, getting closer towards yeah. being back, so... Even if it goes to extra time, 
Maybe there's advantage Liverpool because United yeah. squad is stretched a bit. I do, but I, all, I think where we're at right now, <laughs> the momentum we've got, the, the, the performance, it's like we didn't beat City for the performance. I just think Klopp won't even be thinking about that. He'll just be thinking of winning this game. You know, honestly, I think I think if Ten Hag might finish, might, might be planning his game around 120, 30 minutes plus pens. But I just think Jürgen Klopp's thinking, go and beat this team. And You know what I mean? We've got a lot of fans there, like you say. But, I think I just think the form the front line even though Diaz isn't scoring he's like you know when Salah plays badly he still scores Diaz is playing really well but just not scoring so you're okay with that I just think it, it, as I said earlier in the show I think it's going to be take a real bad day for us to not score goals here we're going to have to miss a lot of chances and waste passes and make mistakes I mean there's one scenario which would worry me is if they got a goal very early on yeah. you know a penalty or something you know yeah. that they might then decide to shut up shop and the crowd would be forgiving I think if they did that yeah and it's just and back then, to the morning, then yeah. it's then it's like Real Madrid in the final oh. you know I, are we going to ride our luck and score yeah. or are we going to have you know their goalie inspired you know well what we need is we need to just flip we that don't to, we? we do we go and to. score and shut them all up here yeah. and go and mad and just... go and lads, we, are, we got a question here basically well MK says score prediction guys we, we always yeah. end, end up on that one so mm-hmm. are Liverpool in the semi-finals John at, at the weekend I think so yeah 3-0 yeah, I, 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 I'll go four one. I think we scored a lot of goals. I think United get a, a goal out of nowhere in typical fashion. Maybe like two nil, two one. Then we get three and four, and they're just a bit. Shattered three of them just get a fisherman's friends. The the all the all. <laughs> I know the the all throat. I mean, I was fine before, but I've, uh, I've, I don't know if that's a bit of a croaky voice. Do apologise. Um, elsewhere, very quickly, Wolves, Coventry, Oof. City, Newcastle, Chelsea, Leicester. The other three ties. Um, mm. I'm get if I say Wolves, City, and Chelsea get through. I mean, I, unless they're flying at the top of the league, I, I, or maybe they're, they're difficult. D- but d- the mad thing is, is that there's no other games, is there? So like, this is it for the international break. So for, like for Newcastle, it's a bit of a like thing. Same for Newcastle as it is for United. It's in their sense. season, isn't it's it? Their yeah. season. City have got no Ed- no Edison, no De Bruyne. So they, they can throw everything at yeah. it. I think um, I'm not sure Leicester would be bothered. But, you know, but they, they'll probably throw everything on it. But the thing is, John, right, here's the mad thing about this, and this is why I think it's really good for us, is that the FA with the FA Cup now, after this international break, there's one game between um, in the FA Cup and then and then it's the last game of the season. So Leicester did be, play, have to play an FA Cup game, one game, a semi, and then if they did get to a final, they don't have to worry about it until they're promoted. So it's the same, but it's not like the Europa League and Champions League where you've got to play all these games in between. Right. You yeah, think yeah. about it, you've got that just that semi final. Yeah. Imagine, imagine they beat Chelsea and get Wolves or Coventry. They'd fancy themselves to do a job. So I, I, I actually think that could end up being tied, tied around that Chelsea versus Leicester because I don't trust Chelsea at all. Fair enough, yeah, we'll see how it all goes. Uh, right then, guys, thanks very much for joining me. Thanks for helping me get through that. I'm follow <laughs> my voice. We're going to pack in at one point. I think I'm all right right now. Go and find your fisherman's friend. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go and find the cops. Yeah. Thanks to John. Thanks to Sam. Thanks to Joe for producing. Thanks to all you guys for watching or listening. Do go and check out Paul's interview with Ian Rush and John Aldridge over on the Axic UK YouTube channel as well. And yet we'll see you on Sunday for the Watch Along Man United versus Liverpool. See you then. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.